Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. I haven't got I haven't got a lot else to do here really. We've got a cultivating job there. I've got one sowing job here on field 19 with wheat, which is only a small field. So we will borrow items for field 19 job. The cultivating for field 13 will borrow items for that one. Uh, 21 is, oh, that's wheat as well. That's the same farmer. We'll borrow items again for that one. And field 19 and field 21 are the same farmer. So I can go, oh, it's a big old field there. Well, I, I was going to say I could use the same machine, but I'm not going to. I'm, I'll, I'll get both of those jobs going at the same time. And then we've got seven is planting with cotton, which we're not going to do. We do have field two with sunflowers, which we will do, I suspect. And the rest, it, well, there's two cotton harvest jobs, which we won't do because we don't do that. And the potato one I'm going to leave. So we'll see if we can make enough money without having to get any more than this. I'm going to need some... Not fertilizer, I'm going to need seed. I'm going to get three pallets of seed. So I will go here and I will go one, two, three, like that. Because I think what I'm going to need is this one here is going to have one pallet of seed. Where did it put the, did it put, oh, it's dropped it in there. Right, okay, it, it, it is there. Uh, this one right here is going to have a single pallet of seed. And actually, if I go to this tractor here a minute and I move him forward and get him out of the way, I might have a better chance of picking up the pallets of seed. So we'll, we'll get this one moved. He needs to go to field 13, so we're going to drive over to field 13 a minute and get this one going, and then we'll come back and we'll deal with the seed. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, where's field... Th All right, I need to head on down here. There's a road sign under there. Oops. Um, we'll go and get the field 13 underway with the cultivating, and... I know these three jobs are not going to be enough to get us our tractor and fertilizer spreader, but what I'm wondering is whether or not it would actually be worth cutting down some of the trees on our land and moving that timber and bringing it back while some of these jobs are going on. Now, I know that moving timber and um, stuff is... Something I said I didn't really want to do a lot of, mainly because I spent so much time doing it in the last series. However, I did also state that I'm not ruling it out completely. So I'm kind of liking the idea of doing a bit of it so that we've got, uh, you know, we, we can sort of make use of that. that Growing trees is a cash crop, isn't it? So we could take some of those trees, we could cash in on them. And then we could use them a little bit later. Uh, well, not not use them a bit later. I mean, we cash in on them now. And then a little bit later, we could go and plant some more trees along the top bank of our field up there. Because of where the stones are up there, it's not like we can go and plough our field up very much bigger. So we're not really going to be able to make a big make any difference to the size of the field. So we just sort of, we, we need to leave the field as it is. There's, there's not a lot of extra room there. There might be a bit that we could plough off. Um, but yeah, first things first, we'd be looking at removing the some of those trees. Getting them sold. There's, there's a few extra thousands coming in. It's not vast sums. And it does depend on what we do. I mean, like if I buy a... Um, if I buy a, a, a thingamajiggy, a hooser me call it, I'm going to drive back over this side and, and drop in again. Um, if I was to buy a chainsaw and just chop them up and move them by hand, we're not going to get very, not, not vast quantities of money coming in. But we at least do have a pickup truck that we can go and load up and, and move a load of timber with which is one way of doing it, and we could go and purchase ourselves a 
well, go back and rebuy the trailer that we sold beforehand. And we could do something with that one. That's a, a good way of doing it. The fantastic thing about the piece of land that we've bought is the sawmill is right next to us. There's the sawmill right there. So anything that we buy, and any trees that we go and process, we can sell right there. Now, the other thing that I was wondering about is wood chips. It's 67 per thousand. It probably wouldn't pay to turn the trees into wood chips. Probably wouldn't be a good one to go and do. But there is, I think, money to be made with the trees, or at least some of them. And then, uh, um, you know, we, we can always go and plant more a bit later in order to regenerate the trees that we've gone and ripped out. Whether or not that would be even a thing. I don't think I said, I don't think I've said at any point that I'm not going to do any trees. I think I said that I didn't really want to do much in a way of tree harvesting, mainly because of how much we'd done before. So I'm definitely not planning on buying um, large-scale machinery and doing a whole load of stuff like that with them, just because of the amount of time that we've spent previously doing lots of work with trees. Um, but that could be what we need, because... What do I need in order to... I'll tell you what, we'll we'll look at the, the money, we'll look at the prices. I think it's 25,000 on top of the 50,000 for the tractor. Um, see, this is why I'm, I'm now seriously considering getting the Bureau first rather than the electric tractor. Even though I said I'd get the electric tractor because the, the Bureau is 30,000 whereas the electric tractor is 50,000. Uh, well, actually, I don't think it's 30,000. It's like 35,000. But you get the idea. It's... It's a considerable amount of money, the difference in the two prices. And that way, we've got our tractor and we've got our fertilizer spreader and those jobs are then able to get underway. We can go and take a whole load of fertilizer contracts and we can just have the tractor going from one contract to the next um, and then cashing in on them when they're all complete. And it would be pretty quick as well if we've got a... 45 meter spread on our fertilizer spreader it's not going to take it very long at all to rush off between all of those jobs but yeah it's it's, it's whether or not we can actually afford that and this is why i don't like this um cultivator very much it it just yeah it's it's too long and fiddly for these little tiny fields that's the problem. It's 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 too long. Yeah, I I don't. The soil. I well, see, I have no idea what um soil would be like up in the mountains. Whether there would be a lot of heavy clay, but like the length of this one, with the amount of cultivating that's going on with a single pass on here, this seems to me to be the kind of job. You know, the the kind of setup that you would have for a rather heavy soil. You you wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought you wouldn't be having this kind of setup for anything light. like that bit that we're dragging along behind. If we had a nice light and fluffy soil here, I don't think we'd need that bit on the back. And yeah, so I, I but I don't know what the the soil is like up in the mountains. I didn't think that soil up in the mountains was a particularly heavy clay. I, di I didn't think that's what we would be looking at up here. I thought this would be more of a um, a, a loamy type soil. Maybe, maybe, well, probably not peat. Peat is a moorland type soil. I'm, I, I'm used to dealing with peat soils a lot. That's, that's, that's what we have here, um, which is why the rain that I've had been experiencing, well, it is, it's stopped now, but um, it, it rained non-stop for a couple of weeks. Um the moors themselves, they don't flood very often. You don't get much flooding up on the moors. You do from the rivers, where all the water runs down to the rivers. But the water runs through pretty quick. Peat soil drains very fast. Um, it's, it's very free draining, which is why you can have animals wandering the moors all winter without making lots and lots of mess. They do make mud in some places, but generally you don't get lots of mud over the moors because the peat soil does tend to be fairly free draining. 
and that's like one of the good things about it. It, it drains out rather beautifully. Um, but I've been I've, I've seen like standing water in places that I'd never even imagined standing water could exist in the last couple of weeks, which is quite a remarkable thing to see. Now let's just put that down there and let's see how the hired help copes with doing this. It's going up there. Because it was such a short slice, the hired help is working his way right the way across the entire field as though none of the field has been done, which is weird. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it's because this one can also plant, and that's why it's kind of thrown it. But, well, you do you, man. You do you. So, uh, you, you carry on and do that. And we're going to go over here, and we're going to get field 19 started a minute with the planting job. Um, so, I can jump onto you. You can take 3,000 litres of seed. I'm going to put in... 2,000 litres of seed into this one. So I'm going to load that one up and then I'm going to go over here. What are you doing at the moment? You are... Right, well, hopefully you'll be fine. Um, I have you here and I'm going to load 1,000 litres of seed into this one. Just like that. And then I'm going to get that one hooked on so that one's ready to run over to field 21. This tool is reserved for contract work. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so you're going to go to there and then I'm going to go yeah, to you and we're going to go and load up the next thousand in here which is that one into there. We're not doing fertilizer on this one. That's not happening. And then we're going to back out of here. So long term, we are going to be specializing in root crops and grass production for cows. And sort of the feedback that I've been getting for our long term plans is that a lot of you like the idea of me doing root crops and grass on our own land and organic cows so like well all of our farming is going to be organic we're going to do cows for milk and then we're going to be doing um root crops you know you making use of this new grim dlc that came out and also we're going to be doing um uh yeah well root crops cows and and just lots of grass with the root crops um several of you seem to like the idea of me not doing any arable crops no arable crops at all now the only arable stuff that we actually need for cows in order to make the cows go well is straw we just need something to get straw from and there are two options. We could grow a little bit of um, wheat or barley or oats and we could do it. We could have a contract and then bale up before we complete the contract, which I know some people do actually do. And it's certainly a thing that you could do in real life, but a lot of people don't really like the idea of me doing that on here because it's kind of... We're not paying for it and we're cheating on the game mechanics, so it kind of, it's, it's a little bit cheaty doing that. But what we could do is we could buy our straw. And most farmers that I know in my part of the world don't grow their own arable crops. Not, um, so, well, some farmers do, but most of the farmers I know that have sheep and cattle don't grow arable crops they have sheep and cattle that's what that's that's what they do that they, they have sheep and cattle um so there's no arable crops there am i supposed to be planting wheat in here it just suddenly occurred to me that maybe i'm doing this all wrong i don't think i am uh field with wheat and with right they're both planted with wheat that's good um so 
Oh yeah, of course it comes up with a warning if you get it wrong, doesn't it? Um, doing it. I don't suppose that really matters. Putting that one on. Uh, doing it with uh, buying in straw. That's actually quite a realistic thing to go and do, and we we've now got that possibility in the game. I can buy a bale of wheat straw right there for six hundred and fifty euros, or a round bale if I um, have round bale handling. So we could buy in all of our straw. We won't need to buy in hay or silage, but we have the possibility for buying in our straw as so many farmers who raise livestock would do. And so that's, that's quite a normal thing to go and do. And I kind of like the idea of doing that for once, because I always, whatever series I'm doing, I always grow my own. I always have, like, I, I do a bit of everything. But if I'm specializing in root crops and I'm raising cattle, I'm not really, you know, in real life, I, I, I wouldn't really be wanting to go to the expense of buying, um combines in order to grow a little bit of straw for my animals because that would be the only reason for me doing arable crops would be to have straw for the cattle if we're specializing in potatoes and sugar beet um potatoes to start with but we would probably venture to sugar beets as well we could do that uh, yeah it, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go and um do arable. Well, maybe we will. Maybe we will. We will diversify later on down the line a bit. But to start off with, I don't think we need to. And we'll, as we're starting with potatoes, it's all specialist equipment. We don't even have a general um, seed drill for starting off with. And you know, maybe later when we do spec, when we've like got more machinery for our contracting business, because the, the contracting is still quite an important part of it well it's definitely an important part of things at the moment um the contracting is going to be a very important part of things we're going to be wanting to keep going with contracts and keep doing all of our work which means that we potentially would be buying a combine later on so then maybe we would grow a little bit ourselves but certainly to start off with i kind of like the idea of having to buy in the straw for the cows, for bedding and for making TMR. Um, I definitely like the idea of um, our organic cattle. You, you, can, you can in the game, you, you don't have to put bedding in for them. Um, you can leave it without bedding, although it's a bit different when you're playing seasons, isn't it? So you can, like... Uh, does it say in here? If we go and have a look at the animal pen in here. Doesn't say anything about whether you have to put bedding in for the cows. Whether you get a, a, a loss of yield. Or you gain yield or anything. But yeah, um, you don't. I, I don't think you have to put bedding in. Certainly with seasons, you've got a choice. You can have bedding or you can have just slurry. Uh, you, yeah, you, you have bedding and get manure. Or you can have no bedding and you get slurry coming out of them. Um, personally, I think that we would have to put bedding in. I, I, it's only right that we would put bedding in. Um, but the more cows you get, the more bedding you've got to buy. And that's where it could start to get expensive. So whether or not running cows and buying the bedding in is actually profitable i don't know that that could be something that we sort of start to find out as we progress through and what i'm going to do right here is i'm going to press h on there and i'm going to let the hired help just run through that bit while we take a quick look in here for fertilizer technology so it's it's that one there, isn't it? That's the one that we want to get. It's 24,500. So, but we could start off with that one. And that way we can start earning ourselves a bit of money. That's just 2,300. That is a deliciously dirt cheap um, fertilizer spreader right there. It's only 18 meters. Doesn't matter. It's only 600 liters of fertilizer in it, which probably does matter a bit more. Um, but that's definitely a strong contender in order just to sort of kickstart things. Now, there's 10 grand difference in those two. 
unfortunately. But I've already, I, I did say I was going to get this one. So I will do that. I will commit. I will stick with it. Uh, plus that one's 40k and that one's only 32. So this one take forever to go anywhere. Um, at least this one's a little bit speedier. Uh, so we've, we got to get about 53,000 euros then. That's, that's our target right now, is about 53,000 euros so that we can get the tractor and then we can get that really small Amazon spreader. And once we've got that really small Amazon spreader, then the next thing that we need to go and do is... I'm just going to bring you over and I'm going to set you going right there. You can now just carry on. I suspect I'm going to have to get a bit more seed for that one. Although I suspect that one may run out, uh, not run out. So we better bring that bit over into this one. Um, just go... Oh, I've also got... Well, I've got 200 litres of seeds in there. Um, so let's get you a minute. Oh, that doesn't fold up. I did wonder if maybe that bit folded up, but it doesn't. Uh... Yeah, so we're looking about 53,000 euros, and then obviously we're going to want a bit of extra capital to go and buy the first pallet of fertilizer that we're going to need for the first job, which well, shouldn't be too bad. Um, so say 56, 60,000 euros, something like that. We're already on 15, so we've got another 45,000 to go. That's all we've got to get, is another 45,000 litres, and liters uh euros and then we can buy our tractor and we can start all those fertilizer jobs and the idea i've got with this where yeah, you do um drop both of those down when you do this don't you the idea that i've got with this we just do that and then go there and start you off uh once he gets down to the other end i'm going to do a pass maybe two along the bottom end of the field and then we'll let him sort of carry on with the rest of it so this one's planting wheat as well um get these going and then we can have a look at those trees over there which means that i need to buy a chainsaw if i'm gonna do this i gotta buy a chainsaw we got no option so we want to go in here i don't know what is I think Husqvarna is like the, a, a, a big European brand, I'm, I'm, but I'm not entirely sure. Right, we'll, we'll stop you. You're obviously not able to cope with the complexities of stopping in front of the fence. So we'll have to help you out with that one. And we will lower down there and fire that up. Off you go like that. And we'll let you do two, maybe three passes just on this bit gonna leave a little tiny bit unplanted there because the end of the field is ever such a slight angle oh no no he is gonna get it way the game mechanics work sometimes very mysterious uh yeah i don't know which is the like the most popular brand in mainland europe i don't like mcculloch i absolutely don't like mcculloch i've bought um equipment from them before and it was unreliable at best it's the base that that is the, the the most glowing report that i can give to them is that they were unreliable they were far worse than unreliable so i have no interest in that one uh so it's between these three now i personally own a yonted uh chainsaw and a few members of my family have got still chainsaws and they swear by them so I'm going to go with the one that I myself have this time, I think. So we're going to buy a chainsaw right there for 1,000 euros. And then we are looking at, well, forestry equipment in here. There's not really anything I can get that I can stick on the back of a, a pickup truck. I mean, I could go with that one and have that on the back of a tractor so that I can drag whole trees along. Which actually would be pretty good. I kind of like that idea. Um, there's nothing else much here that I can go and do anything with just yet. Right, we will now bring you out and we will start on this side of the field. We'll set you up to there and we will let you go. So we're going to ignore you. You're just going to carry on and do what you're going to do. You have done a really good job. You've come up to here. 
a little bit more and I mean we'll, we'll sort of tidy up the the rest of it I tell you what I'm actually gonna stop him there a second and I'm gonna go over to this side of the field and I'm just going to set it going down this edge of the field this is gonna give us another um, sewing job once we've done this so I have another sewing job that will become available I'm gonna drop you into there let you go you down here there's maybe not quite enough room here to turn around properly but that's fine you can just carry on you've got 1700 liters left there and we'll go back to our pickup truck so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna reverse up and i'm going to just leave that one there for a minute now with just the pickup truck i can still put some branches in here and we can still make some money so I own, though, now, this, this is, this is going to be the thing, is how much do I actually own here down close to the, the, I own right to the edge of the sawmill. Those trees up against the sawmill, I actually own those. And they're quite close to the car park and that's, um, they, they're causing a bit of a problem that the owners have said they'd like us to remove them. Well, if they want us to remove them, we'll remove them. We'll leave the small trees. I know with the actual game, those won't grow. Um, and I don't have a stump grinder at the moment, so I can't do anything with the the bigger bits of these trees. Uh, but what I can do... Wait, why can't I bring my chainsaw up? I'm scrolling with the mouse... My chainsaw is not coming up. Nope, no chainsaw. I have a chainsaw. Definitely bought one. Wait, really? Garage. I have a chainsaw right there. Why is it not letting me use my chainsaw? Right, I'm going to have to sell that one. I'm going to have to try buying it again. Unless there's a... Is, please tell me there's not a bug with chainsaws in this game. I'm going to try this one again. Yes, I want to purchase that one. Scroll the mouse or press 1 or 2 on the keyboard for it to work. Right. Chainsaw doesn't work. Is that a conflict with a mod? I don't want to spend any more money. I don't want to go spending any more money on this, but it like I need to change. If I'm going to cut trees down, I need to change. <laughs> it's not where it. I, I, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's the type of chainsaw that we've got. Maybe I need to. We'll go. Well, I'll try the still. Um, buy that one there. According to this, I've, I don't actually own the chainsaw on there. I'm wondering if it's a conflict with um one of the other mods that we've got. Garage in here. I've now got two chainsaws in here. And, right, I am at... Uh, I'm not getting anything. I'm pressing buttons. Uh, I'm wondering if it's anything to do with the contract mod. It's stopping it from working. Maybe I need to save and exit the game for the chain... This, this is disappointing. I can't go and cut down the trees. I've just gone and bought the chainsaws. Uh, right, why aren't you working then? What would be the reason for you not to be working? I'm just gonna, I, I've, I've got to do a quick um, search, Google search. Well, unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. So while I sit up here and enjoy this view and a well-earned break, could you please consider taking a look at the links in the description down below? We have Nitrado, who provide gaming servers, who are very, very reliable, and they provide us with a server on our Discord channel. And there is also Fanatical, where you can buy all kinds of different computer games for various different platforms. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.